Now, what I'm going to be tying is basically a muddler. This one here. Now, it is a bit rough. Uh, basically what it is, is a, it's a fly, a tie for both um, Rutland and Grafham. And this fly worked extremely well. Uh, it probably gave an impression of the shrimp. Uh, it was tied to suit it, obviously. It was tied. And uh, now, I do tie it in different uh, body colours, though. Uh, this is tied on this olive here. This is a, a golden olive. Now, basically the body colour, you're looking... Something that would give the impression of where the, the shrimp are feeding or working, and they do take on the colour a wee bit of the area they're in. And uh, like any natural animal, uh, insect, whether it be a fish as well, it'll take on the colour of the background a wee bit just so it gets a bit of protection. Now this is the fly that did extremely well. There was two actually, there was a, a cormorant that did really well. It's the same, this was in the point, it's nothing like a shrimp like. It's got colours down the same way as it. Uh, this is a, a pale olive uh, wing. And that did it extremely well. So it's basically when you're amongst the these the, the shrimp, uh, they're, they're certainly looking for a great fly. In my uh, in my view, is that something that gives an impression of, and those flies gave the impression of something uh, that the shrimp. So, but anyway, I'm going to show you how to tie. It's quite simple. The thread I'm going to be using is a light cahill, an eight o. This colour here. The hook I'm using. This is a size ten. The tens and twelves were the two main sizes. Now you can tie it on a curved hook to obviously help give the curved like shrimp look or you can tie it on a straight hook, both, any of them will do. Uh, this one here is from Tiemco. This is shrimp, obviously, Cadis pupa. Now I've waxed the thread, I'm just going to put down a layer of thread along the shank. I'm going to come all the way along until I'm starting to come well down the bend in this case and then remove the waste, just about there. Now, what I did use was, uh, I had, I like the fibre on the bronze mallard feather. I know it sounds a bit the grey side. These fibres, I like these. Because I've got a lovely taper. So it's a bronze mallard feather, you can see the bronze mallard on that side. Normally you would throw these away, but I like them. I like to use them. Uh, I originally used it in a shrimp pattern many years ago. So when I'm tying a shrimp-like pattern, I like to use them. Now, I'm, what I'm doing here is basically bringing them out so the, the tips are lined up. You just pull it down when, <coughs> excuse me, when it's on the, the feather. And you'll see the tips lining up. And you can tear them away. Now you're looking for a leg length round about the, the body. Just tie them on the top. Now, what I'm going to do, check first. If you're not happy with the length, you can move it and get them to sit. I like to see them spread a wee bit and sometimes a wee turn underneath the thread will control them or tuck them or spread them out. Uh, it just keeps, makes a, there's more life in the fibre then if they're separated so then we trim that the length of the body. Now the rib of the fly could be a wire or tinsel of some sort and I'm using in this case this is a, an oval gold tinsel catch this on the length of the body now I'm going to basically pinch them with these materials and bring the thread up and then come put quickly back down just to tie them down it's easier to do that and then get uh, let's see what's that there we are let's see this one here I'm using it's a golden olive so you could, there's, just, there's lots of colours you could use you use a natural uh, Hare's Ears a great one. Hare's Ears is probably quite popular. There's a, a dub and I like uh, this one here. That's good. It's got a wee touch of UV in it. I don't know if you can see it there. Just, it just catch the light a wee bit. That's a good dubbing. But I'm tying some olive ones at the moment. Uh, and as I say, this one worked really well too. So I've even tied it with claret. Same fly with claret body. And sometimes having the darker body helps. So claret or even black. Uh, silver ribbon on the black one worked. So I'm just making sure there's a good body 
a dove in here because the shrimp's quite thick. So now I'm going to put legs on it. So basically it's a palmer. But I'm using a hen hackle. It's a light furnace. It's just a hen neck I've got. It. You don't want the fibres too long. So you want the black centre which gives the impression that a rib gives you the rib like and the light tips. You can use a, a cock hackle as well. Normally a cock would be used in a palmer like this or a muddler style. But I want it a soft. So I'm just going to catch this. So bear some of the stem. Make sure it's tied on. It's easier with the hackle pliers. Now these are not the strongest hackles in the world so you just basically wind them on. You don't just remember you're winding this on to give legs, not to hold it together. So you just basically wind down. Now I'm going to do a turn at the back first with the rib. If you learn to use all your fingers it's easier. So we do a turn to hold. Just leave the hackle pliers. If you want to make a space for your rib to come through then do that. And then work your way up. There we are. I'm keeping the thread tight. I can just break that off. It's fine. Now I'm just going to roll my fingers through the, the fibres. So just rub them through. There's my rub there. I can catch this in. Always keeping things nice and tight. So we can do it. And there we are. That gives an impression of obviously the legs. Now I'm going to go back to my bronze mallard. Now I need a a new one. So what I want to do is give the impression of more legs. But this gives the impression of the back. So again what I'm doing is you can see there, the fibres are all different lengths. I'm bringing them out so the tips are quite close. And once the tips have lined up and I can see that, I can tear it away. Now I want to keep it open, these fibres. So I just basically tie these on the top. Now I tie shrimp patterns with a with a, a wood duck, a bard like wood duck and uh, for shrimp over the back and gives it a speckle look and it, it's like, it works extremely well so I'm just doing much the same but on this small muddler it doesn't look like much but when you see in the water I'll just rub my finger on the top and this comes over and it's got the colours and the blend that once you see it in the water it's just just right. I mean it will not it'll not win any prizes for like the front page of a magazine or anything. But if you want to catch fish then this is certainly worth having. Now get some deer here. This is just some raw deer. Now I'm just gonna take some of the well marked tips. Cut it close to the skin. It's important you do this. Two things that happen to you when you do this. And you see all that, the fluff, there's fluff within the here, you'll see it there. Now, you've got to remove that. First thing it does is, if you, when you remove it, when you go to stack it, it will stack much easier. Uh, I'm just going to run it through a big comb I've got at the side here as well. It'll stack much easier, but the most important thing is, when you go to basically wind it on, it will go with the thread and not stick. Usually the fine under fur causes it to kind of tangle up. So we put these in tip first into the stacker. Tap on your desk. The tips are lined up. It's fine. Let's make a space here so I can see. Now, basically you don't want this too long. You don't want it as long like this. No, I'm not saying don't do it because the chances are it will probably work for you. But basically you want it short so it gives more of the, again, head light, shrimpy like It helps keep the look. The only issue it has here is that the, the, these fibres are quite long and I don't have any. I'd be happy if it was this fibre here was slightly further up. But this is all I've got. It's got the right colour but it will work for me. And uh, it does work so. Again, as I say, the tip's here, halfway up the wing, the, the wing itself. So we hold that. Oops, we wrap wax on your thread. You need the wax to give you the extra grip. So we come round with a couple of turns. 
loose and then we let the tips go and we slowly allow the, the D here to spin round the head and then what you do then is you work keeping the thread tight towards the eye of the hook it's not a heavy muddler this this, the deer hair here is just to give the impression of the head. So then we come to the front of it. Hold it up. Keeping the thread always tight. Straight in and quite finish. And then we trim away our thread. And then we bring out these cut ends. So we do. Just bring them straight out so we can trim them away. And then... Basically what I like to do is you can turn it upside down, you'll see you'll see better here. I'm using the curve of the scissors, these are small curved scissors, the eye of the hook, just to help me give me like a, a distance, uh, a length to work with. Now I've got the deer here that I like. And we just again we'll always use the the eye and the curve of the scissors to work round. It's not as easy maybe in the top because you don't have the eyes much, but you can still still do it. So see it's not a heavy muddler head but you're trying to keep the shape of the or give an impression of the shrimp and you don't want it too heavy unless you want it near the top so it's worth having some tied like that. Now these are the, the lightly dressed ones that I tie or compared to some of the muddlers anyway. Just checking how it's sitting. Trimming, just getting the odd one I've missed. I'm just going to blow it with the hairdryer. That'll tighten the deer hair up a wee bit and help put a bit of shape into the fly. So we on a warm set. And then just basically stroke your fingers back, or through it, sorry, pulling back the fibres. He's on there. The warm air tightens up the head, and as well as helps to shape the fly. There is a broken end in there. You don't have to go for it, but I will. And there we are. It's a great, it's a nice wee fly. I say this only gives the impression of a a shrimp, which has got lots of legs. Muddler like type flies like these are perfect for the for shrimp. Uh, these they do really work. And then dab on some varnish. Just obviously onto the thread. Don't worry too much if you put it onto the, the front of the deer hair, it'll help protect it. As I say, I'll not win any prizes for looks and all. But these are really good. So again, we just make sure the eye is clean. And there we are. And that's the, the killer shrimp uh, muddler, as I call it. They say, mess about with the colours of the body. Hairs here. Uh, it could be, I like a creamy colour, an olive. Uh, even the darker colours. Like you go into... The, the dark olives, oh, sorry, well dark olive would work, but you get even black and claret. There is days these colours work, and they're worth having, so. Anyway, there she is, rough and ready, as they say, but a good fishing fly, certainly worth having, so. I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe, it does help, and thank you for watching.